Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth and welcome to episode 8 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode, we'll be putting a computer running Linux CNC through some stress testing to determine the amount of jitter the computer produces. The result of this testing will give a clear indication of the suitability of the computer to running your real-time applications. Please recall that I'm not a teacher, engineer, or machinist. I'm a home hobbyist wishing to share my experience with CNC machines for the home shop. As these videos progress, I hope to present enough material to enable new users entering the hobby to adapt the information to their particular needs. Additionally, maybe the information will prevent people from encountering some of the problems that I've stumbled into along the way. With that out of the way, let's get started. What is and why do a stress test? Stress testing a computer is a process of checking how the computer performs under a heavy computational load. When stress testing, the computer is placed under conditions that it would not normally experience. Doing this will demonstrate the stability of the machine and its components. From a CNC controller's perspective, we are interested in seeing what effect it has on the latency of the real-time system. Recall that a real-time operating system is designed to react on data or outside inputs in a specific amount of time. Now, This does not mean that the computer reacts to something instantaneously or even super fast, but rather will react to the stimuli in a predictable and repeatable amount of time. In a perfect world, the amount of time to react would be the same every time with absolutely no variance. Unfortunately for us, we don't live in a perfect world and many things can impact a real-time system. For example, hardware latency, processor cache, and paging systems are just a few of the things that can disrupt that predictable and repeatable time frame that the operating system should respect. The allocated time is based on two threads that are clocked at certain speeds on the controller. These are called the servo and base threads. The servo thread runs at a speed of 1 millisecond and the base thread runs at a speed of 25 microseconds. The reason these threads run at different speeds is because not all operations that are performed have to be run at the same speed. For example, a classic ladder program would be attached to the servo thread because the millisecond time frame is more than fast enough to process the ladder logic, while a step generator would run on the base thread. Step pulses created by the generator have to be created fast enough for the motors to keep up with the feed rate program to them. It is the variance in time that most interests us and is the reason we do the stress test on the computer. This variance in time is referred to as jitter. Some jitter is acceptable, but when it becomes large enough, it will impact the system enough to make the computer unusable for a CNC application. Linux CNC provides three tools to analyze the amount of jitter encountered by the servo and base threads. These are the How Latency Test, available from the CNC submenu, and the Latency Plot and Latency Histogram programs, both of which are started from the command line. Any of these programs can be used to help analyze latency. However, they are real-time applications and as a result, only one of them can be run at a time. Also note that you cannot run these applications while Linux CNC is running. By far, the How Latency Test application is the most used. To start the application, click on the Latency Test under CNC menu in the Application menu. This application will monitor both the servo and base threads and keep track of the jitter. Additionally, it will note the maximum interval the thread takes and display a time of the previous interval. This will be discussed in more in the practical demonstration. I should also mention that this is the only tool that you're actually required to run to test the system. The Latency Histogram program is a command line application that displays a graph of the intervals of threads. It does not track latency but does give you a visual of how well the system is behaving. This may sound confusing but I'll discuss this more in the demonstration. The latency plot is another command line application and will show a graph that indicates the maximum latency for, for the base and servo threads. Additionally, it will show the latency of the thread as it occurs. This is a handy to tool to see if there's something causing latency at some regular interval. I'll explore this more in the practical demonstration. Finally, 
I want to give a shout out and a thank you to PCW Mesa at the Linux CNC IRC channel for helping me clarify some of the details on these tools. Thank you very much, sir, for your assistance. To stress test the machine, we'll want to find a way of forcing the computer to work as hard as we can, while at the same time running one of the above applications to measure how the real-time system is performing. There are a variety of tools available to benchmark or stress the computer. GLX Gears is a simple graphics test that renders an image of gears rolling on themselves and tracks the frame rate. Running multiple copies of GLX Gears can challenge the GPU and is a good test to run. For more stress on the GPU, you could run one of the benchmark programs by Unigen. Since most of us are using older hardware, I would suggest their Sanctuary or Tropic benchmark software. Please keep in mind that these other applications may or may not work depending on the hardware that your computer has installed. I'll cover these applications in the practical demonstration. Lastly, there's a benchmark suite of tests provided by Pharonix. There are a myriad of tests available through this software to work the memory, network, disk subsystems, and the CPU. The Pharonix test suite can be installed using Synaptic Package Manager from the DB and Wheezy menu. I'll show you how to install and run the test suite in the practical demonstration. There are several other stress testing and benchmarking tools available for Linux and a quick Google search will provide you with many 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 options. However, these are more than enough to get started. Remember, the goal is to work the computer hard to see how it affects the real-time system. When the system has been thoroughly tested and abused, it's important, very very important, to make note of the jitter value recorded in the HAL latency test program. Recall that there are two jitter values listed one for the base thread and one for the servo thread. The number that needs to be written down and saved is the jitter value for the base thread. This number will be used at a later time when setting up Linux CNC to run your hardware. So, what does the jitter value mean? Well, the base thread is the signal that is used to control stepper motors. And these motors require a quick stream of pulses to operate efficiently. The base rate at which these pulses can be sent is at 25 microseconds plus the maximum amount of jitter or delay the system will experience. So the more jitter value, the slower the pulses can be sent to the motor controllers. The less jitter, the faster they can be sent. In the words of the Linux CNC developers, think of these pulses as a heartbeat. In this case, the faster that you can run the heartbeat, the faster and smoother the pulses will be to the stepper motors. Finally, let's address the big question. How much jitter is too much? This is a question that has an answer of, it depends. Well, that isn't helpful, so let's look at a use case scenario. Most hobbyists will use parallel port and stepper motors to drive their machines. Using a setup like this will require Linux CNC to create the step pulses to move and change direction of the stepper motors. When used in this manner, it is referred to as software stepping. Jitter will directly affect how well the software step generators will generate the stepping pulses. Like above, if you have more jitter, it will take longer to generate the pulses because the system adds this jitter to the value of the base thread that is used to create the pulses. Using this scenario to answer the question, documentation informs us of the following. Now these are the jitter, if your total jitter is between 15 and 20 microseconds, which would be 15,000 to 20,000 nanoseconds, you should experience very nice results with self-force stepping. If your max jitter is 30 to 50 microseconds, that's 30,000 to 50,000 nanoseconds, you should still get re good results, but the max steps that you get might be a little disappointing, especially if you're using fine uh, lead screws or if you're using micro stepping. Now if your max jitter is a thousand micro, I mean, I'm sorry, a hundred microseconds or more, a hundred thousand nanoseconds, the computer is not a good candidate for software stepping. Now that doesn't mean the computer can't be used, but it, you know, in, in a hobby situation like we're explaining here, it probably wouldn't be a good candidate. And if your max jitter is more than a millisecond or a million nanoseconds, the computer's not a good candidate for Linux CNC at all. 
Well, that's quite enough brain bending. Let's get to the practical portion of this video. Okay, so here we're at uh, our Linux CNC controller computer, and let's see if we can make this machine cry a little bit or something. Anyway, let's let's work it. So first, let's talk about um, the three applications that uh, Linux CNC provides us to visualize latency or jitter. Okay, the first one's under the CNC menu, and it's called latency test. Now, this is what I referred to in the documentation as the uh, how hardware abstraction layer by the way is what that means latency test so let's look at here what it's recording here now interestingly enough now I'm recording the desktop as we do it so I may experience more latency or jitter uh, than you know I normally would with the machine but then again that's the whole point is to work the machine so we have two threads we have the servo thread that runs at one millisecond and the base thread that runs at 25 microseconds. Now if you're not familiar with uh, this fractional time that I keep talking about, there are 1,000 milliseconds in a second, right? So um, so this is 0 .001 uh, seconds, right? There are 1 million microseconds in a second, right? So 25 microseconds would be 0.000025 of a second, right? and a nanosecond is one billionth of a second so if we divide this uh, number here by th uh, by a thousand we would get 18.178 or 18.178 microseconds right uh, or we get 0 0.018 milliseconds or 0 0.000018 um, seconds so to kind of give you an idea of what the time frame that we're talking about here is so the servo thread is a slower thread and it's really designed for slower activities that are going to run in the real-time system. Okay, like classic ladder, um, ser actual servo operations and things like that. So it's historically got its name servo thread. The base thread is a much, much faster um, thread and uh, its, its primary objective in life is to uh, capture or or send out any information that has to be done very very fast like stepper motors uh, for example require very fast pulses in order to keep them running while the while you know you're cutting or whatever it is that you're doing so what we're interested in here is this max jitter right so this is the variance of uh, the maximum variance from the ideal time so the idea time here on the base thread is 25 microseconds right so we see here that we've experienced 18,200 nanoseconds of jitter or 18.2 microseconds, right? So if we add 25 microseconds and 18.2 microseconds, we end up with this. That's how we're getting this 37 point or, you know, 37,775 nanoseconds or 37.775 microseconds, right? So this is the max time that it's taken to service something and this is the variance. This last interval, this is the amount of time that elapsed since the last interval, right? So uh, these you can ignore these numbers, they're going to flash by so fast and then they really won't mean anything in this instance. So this is the how latency test and this is the only one that you really have to run, I mean uh, because it actually records the jitter and uh, whatever you know when we're done with the test we'll take this number here this 18,200 or what number it is and we'll write that down and we'll keep that in a safe place because the configurations that we're going to use in the future when we set up stepper motors to run with this system we're going to use um, that number okay so it's very important and I, I've said it several times make sure you write that number down okay so while this application is running the how latency test you want to abuse the computer right so how can you abuse it well you can download big files you can open and close windows listen to music uh, stream YouTube video uh, just do everything that you can uh, you know you want to bog the machine down so one of the applications that I said that you can use for that is called GLX gears so if I hit application menu and run program I want to run GLX gears, GLX gears, and when I do that, you'll see a window pop up with these three gears rolling on each other, and that's really just 
an OpenGL program that's uh, as rendering this and it reports the frame rate. Now that in itself, you know, might not do a whole lot, but now we can start multiple ones of these, right? Run GLX gears. So now we got two of them running. Run GLX gears again. So we got now three of them running. And then in addition to whatever else that we're going to do, you know, we might want to open the web browser here and uh, that sort of thing. So while I have the web browser open, remember I told you that uh, uh, an additional way that you can tax the um, GPU or the graphics processing unit or the graphics card is um, to run one of the benchmark programs from Unigen. So let's open up the web browser and I'm going to go to benchmark.unigen.com and hit enter. Now they have several of these, but now most of us are probably using um, old software. I mean, I'm sorry, old hardware, old computers to you know try to use for CNC because look, I mean, we're hobbyists, right? We just don't have a lot of uh, disposable income to be spending on stuff. So uh, although Heaven uh, Benchmark is is pretty on older hardware, I've I've had a lot of problems running it. So let's come down here to the um, Tropics and Sanctuary benchmark. Okay, uh, the, this is the oldest of Sanctuary, and then this is newer, 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 newer as you go up. So I'm going to click on Sanctuary, and then here you see that there's free download for Linux. I'm going to click that, and we should be offered a save dialog here. Eventually, today, maybe I didn't get a click. There it is. So I'm going to save this. And this will save in our downloads folder. We see here. Okay, so I'm going to click on that to open the folder. So here you see Unigen, or I'm sorry, Unigen Sanctuary 2.3 run. So this is a shell script. Now, if I double click this, it won't do anything. Okay, and the reason why is that uh, in Linux, uh, files have certain attributes. And let's go take a look. I'm going to hit the terminal emulator down here. And I'm going to change directory to downloads. Okay, and we'll list. Oops, not LSD. That's for a bad night, right? So we list the files and we see the file that we download the Unigen Sanctuary 2.3.run. Well, I'm going to do a long listing. And we notice that these have these attributes over here to the side. So Linux has attributes for the owner, right? It has attributes for the group, and it has attributes for the rest of the planet okay or the rest of the world so what we want to do is we want to mark this thing as executable and we're going to do that by saying chmod or in other words we're going to change the mode of a file and we want to add the executable bit so that's the plus x and then we're going to specify that we specify the name of the file that we want to change in this case it's the unigen sanctuary 2.3.run so hit enter and it looks like nothing happens but if I do a list this time you notice that the colors changed. It indicates that something has changed about the file in this case green means that it's executable and if I do that long listing if we look over here we see that the executable bit has been turned on for everybody okay the owner the group and the and the uh, and the world so but don't get caught up into that I just wanted to give a little background for those folks that have never been in and Linux that works a lot different than Windows. So now we want to run this shell script. So I'm saying from the current directory, that's what that dot slash means, I want to run this Unigen Sanctuary file. Okay, and so it extracts. So if I do a list, I now see that there's a folder called Sanctuary. And if I change into that folder and do a list, I see that there are two executable files. We know they're executable because they're green, right? Or we could do this ls minus l and take a look. We see that, well, everything in there is executable. All right, so um, I'm going to run the 1024 by 768 windowed script. So from this directory, 1024, and then press enter. And then we start with the. Uh, uh, Oops. We have the uh, 
sanctuary demo and it will just automatically start running okay you don't have to do anything now up here remember we have GLX gears running at the same time so we're really working this system pretty hard and if we come up here and uh, click on our how we're interested in seeing if this number changes so I'll let that run through the demo well actually I'm not going to let it run completely through the demo for um, the sake of time but in essence you know this is um, you know one of the methods that you can use and while this is all running you can get on the the net and do some more stuff just work the dickens out of the computer that's really all we want to do here to see if we can get this number to change okay so um, I'm going to uh, stop the Unigen. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, the uh, see my computer's getting a little sluggish there. So yes, I'm going to quit. And I think I'll go ahead and stop some of these gears from running. And let's talk about some more bench. I think I told it to quit and it didn't get me. There it goes. Uh, we're going to talk about some more benchmark um, software okay so let's close this stuff down alright so we're gonna keep we're gonna keep our how latency test running and then uh, we want to install the uh, Pharonix, um test suite so we're gonna go to application um, system synaptic package manager and this is where we can install software recall that whenever we're making system changes we have to put in our password. So remember minus C and C. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to do a search for Pharonix. P-H-O-R-O-N-I-X and it will search through the repositories that it has and there it is. Pharonix test suite. I'm going to click that. I want to mark that for installation and hit apply. So it tells us what's going to be installed. We're going to say apply Okay, and it installs the software. Okay, so the software is successfully installed. We're going to close that. And then we can close the Synaptic Package Manager. You notice it's got a green check. So it shows that it's... And we can find this over in System Pharonix uh, test suite. Now this runs in a. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Let's try this again. Oops. All right. So I'm not sure what's going on. So let's see if we can diagnose this here. Let's uh, let's get out of this. PHP Fedora Classic. Okay, so it looks like I have an error in the software. Uh, now I've run this on this computer before, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me restart this computer and uh, let me come back in and we'll see, what, see if, if that will help it. So let's, let's do that first. Okay, so the problem was um, you know, before I start this video, I done a lot of experimenting, and I used different versions of the Pharonix uh, test suite, and so the system was confused about which one I had installed. So I had to go in there and clean out the additional one that I had, and I'm not going to drive you crazy. Let's just say, let's just suffice it to say that um, if if you've only installed it through the package manager, like I showed you, you should be fine. So we'll hit Applications menu, System, and Pharonix test suite. Now the very first run it says hey these are the um, terms and conditions do you agree uh, and wish to proceed we're gonna say yes okay and then here it wants to know hey do you want to enable some anonymous usage statistics reporting yes or no this is up to you I'll say yes I don't care and then it wants to know if uh, if it wants to use some anonymous statistic reporting installed software which I don't care so Alright, so at this point we have a menu that pops up and says 
uh, well first of all it shows you this is the system hardware it detects on your machine so here you see this is an Intel Core 2 dual E7600 uh, the motherboard the amount of RAM yada 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 that I have installed and so we ha we're presented with a menu it says you want to run a single test do you want to run a suite of tests do you want to run a complex system test show the hardware software information etc so what I want to do is I want to run a complex system test okay so I'm going to hit 3 and hit enter now this takes a little bit to get started up and I want to go in here and make sure that my latency test is running let's get this back up here going alright so it says uh, that the following dependencies are needed and will need to be installed so I need to install the stuff and ask for the password and the password of course is CNC for my machine now, I have noticed in the past that it uh, says that hey there's there might be some problems here what do you want to do so I'm gonna select number three reattempt to install the missing dependencies and enter the password okay so then it goes out to the internet it grabs the software that it needs to install and then we'll start running the tests now the this test series that we're running is a comprehensive test and um, uh, it, it takes a while to run so you know you might as well use the computer at the same time I'm obviously not going to wait until this is done um, to run it you can abort these tests at any time by holding down the control and the C key okay so anyway that's uh, you know that's a little bit about Pharonix you can go to the Pharonix uh, test suite uh, website and by the way I'll put the Unigen and the Pharonix website link in the description below the video um, so you can check it out but like I said I don't want to spend a whole lot of time um, you know messing with this and you guys don't want to watch a three hour video right and the slide portion of it here is probably long enough so anyway uh, we'll let this run and let's talk about some of the other um, applications here that Linux CNC offers so we've talked about how latency tests what these numbers are and remember that uh, this is the one that you have to run you'll run you'll want to run it for quite a while to determine what this max jitter number is here and this is the number that we're gonna write down uh, in this case right now it's 13946 but as time goes on this number could increase we'll write that down keep it in a safe place because later when we go to configure the system to use with our own hardware We'll want to um, we'll want to record that number and use that number in the config files. So I'm just going to exit out of that, and I'm going to come over here. Remember, I told you the other two uh, programs were called latency histogram and latency plot. So let's take a look at latency histogram. Okay, and we'll run that. And let's take a look at what this produces so if you're familiar with a histogram a, a histogram has a number of bends that's the vertical slots that we can put things in and what we're measuring is the, the difference between one time slice and the next time slice right and then this is the number of slices over time and you see this is a uh, logarithmic right this is uh, you know one times ten to the first power one times ten to the second power the third power etc and so this is normally will appear to be a symmetric graph right with zero being in the middle in other words these are time slices in this case the base thread we're looking at these are the number of time slices that were serviced exactly on time and uh, and if we look here we see that um, that uh, the lower numbers these are you know time slices that are hitting before or after the t the time that it was uh, scheduled so let me let me explain that just a little bit so let's say that we're expecting a, a pulse every um, one second right so if uh, one second if it's serviced it will be right here in the middle but let's say that it's serviced uh, a little late right let's say 1.1 second right so the next one you know so it would draw the line here in the 1.1 second slot but the next one to keep in that one second pulse will come in at 
0.1 early. So that's why this looks symmetric. And uh, a quick Google search on histograms will explain that. So let me go back over here and let's let's address this. So, so we want to save the test results. I'm going to say no. And then so it starts the test. Okay. So you notice that, I don't know if you notice that when this fired off, these grew. So you see that there's some, you know, it's affecting the time. And if we look, uh, it, you know, if we had the, um, the how latency, you know, we would see exactly how much. All right. So let's, that's kind of in a nutshell. So let's, uh, the number of bins, right? That's the number of slices. If we were to put this two, you'd see you'd have a slice in the middle and then you have two on each side, right? And, uh, you know, the bin size here are the same as 0.1 um, microsecond. So, you know, 4, 10, 20, you can set the number of bins all the way up to 200, okay? Um, the minimum and the maximum, these are in microseconds of how late they are. So, I guess you could call this jitter or this is jitter we would this would be 12,900 nanoseconds right but we want an exact number to use so this is not the utility probably to use but at least visually it kind of gives us an idea of how the system's behaving okay and then this is uh, uh how early some of the uh, uh of the uh, times hit and then this is our standard deviation okay all right, so we're going to close this one down, and then finally, let's take a look at the hist uh, latency plot. And this one is probably a little bit more useful in troubleshooting. I'm just going to ex expand this and make it better. So first of all, this is the number of points that we're going to collect across the graph, and we can increase this, right, and we can decrease it. So um, I think, you know, yeah, that probably looks good. So here we're looking at four pieces of data being mapped, okay? So if we have the uh, B is base, S is uh, servo. So these are the max um, uh, time frames that it takes for these to be serviced. So if we look up here at the base thread, the red line, we see that it, that uh, at most, it has taken uh, 10 uh, microseconds, or or uh, you know, to to service that thread. And then if we look at the servo, the blue, you see at most has taken five. Okay, but here's uh, here's really the benefit of this graph. So we have these uh, two lines that indicate the latency, the base thread latency, and the um, servo thread latency. So as, as we look at these spikes as they, oops, sorry about that guys, girls. So if we look at these spikes we can see when the latencies happen for each cycle, right? And looking at this over a long period of time we might see that we get like this large spike over here. We might see that systematically we're getting a large spike, you know, that's cyclic which would kind of indicate that maybe you have some SMI issues. Uh, SMI has to do with multiprocessors and you know if you have a core 2 or a core 4 processor and stuff like that. Chances are if you're dealing with old hardware you're probably um, looking at at best a dual core processor. So anyway that's the latency plot. So these tools are just you know available to you to kind of give you a visualization of what the system is doing. Like I said, the most important one is application CNC latency test. When this one's running, you see this is cranking up. And as we drive the system harder and harder, you know, this might creep up some more. Now, earlier my tests on this machine, to give you an idea, my max jitter was around 30,000 nanoseconds or 30 microseconds, right? So that would have been the number that I've written down. So that's kind of this in a, in a nutshell. Don't sweat this stuff real hard just uh, use the computer move windows around run GLX gears run the test suite if you want to the whole idea is just you know, make the computer work to see if we're gonna have any issues with uh, the real-time system servicing these uh, these threads as they fire off okay 
So that's really all there is uh, to this. I mean, th this is uh, this is not rocket science or anything like that. So don't don't sweat the small stuff. Uh, if you want to play a video game or just go on the internet and surf, but uh, the longer you let this run, the more of an accurate representation you're going to get of a worst case scenario, right? And that's what we're looking for is the worst case scenario, right? Because if uh, the worst case, if we don't account for that and we set our timing, let's say for a stepper motor and some sometime along the worst case scenario crops up, then we miss steps and we ruin a part or we might crash the machine or worse, we may injure ourselves or somebody else. So that's what we do not want to do. So. Alright, so again over here on the Pharonix, uh test here, I'm just going to hit Control C to cancel that. And here you see that uh, so far I'm up to 18,539. Um, and keep in mind that I'm recording the desktop too. So um, so that's, uh, that's pretty much for this. So let's get back to the slides and let's finish this stuff up. Well, so far we've covered a lot of territory. Some of it might be a little confusing. But at this point, we have a machine that we feel confident in using for CNC application. We need to learn how the machine communicates to the outside world. For example, switches, pulse width modulated spindles, stepper controllers, VFDs, and more. To understand this, we must delve into I.O. or input-output hardware that will connect the Linux CNC controller computer to the outside world. In the next video, I'll cover some of the I.O. options that we have to use with Linux CNC. In the meantime, we've installed some software that's no longer needed on the computer, so this would be a good time to remove it, or better yet, get a little extra practice and reinstall Linux CNC from scratch. And remember, don't forget to record your max jitter value for the base thread. Thank you for watching. As always, Thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, or sharing. CNC is an exciting and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends that are thinking of dabbling in it, please consider sending them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.